All right, ladies and gents, interesting game I have here for you. And uh, we've got a fellow who I might not have brought to the channel recently. Now, actually, both of these players I haven't brought to the channel recently, and that's a shame because both these players could be extremely entertaining to watch. Uh, first and foremost, in the blue in the south, playing as the Malians, we have MBL. MBL from Norway, one of the best players of all time, one of the best players in the world, and particularly entertaining in messy situations, uh, particularly entertaining in uh, high-pressure situations, I would say, and both of those things could happen here because he's up against his opponent, who is Huang. Um, years ago, I started the the Huang trend. Like I, There were some people who knew about Huang, but not many. The community was much smaller. I was back when he would only play Huns, and I uh, made quite a few videos on him. He has changed his meta since, uh, but you know, he went from Huns and going this all Dark Age militia into Fast Castle strategy with Siege and Knights. And then he eventually moved on to Celts once he found out how crazy the Celt Siege can be. Believe it or not, Huang can play other civilizations. He can play Aztecs, he can play Spanish, and he can also play the Mongols. He does not branch out much. MBL always goes random civilization. Huang's always going Pixiv. And he has gone for a very strong civilization in the Aztecs, but we'll see exactly how he wishes to play it. Um, you can see the ratings of the player at the bottom right. Uh, MBL was 2630 at this time, so 200 ELO difference, which is crazy because, like, Wong being 2400 puts him in, like, the top 30 or whatever. And this is going to be a funny game. That's all I'm going to say. So, traditionally, the Aztecs would go for Man-at-Arms and Archers. Um, way back in the day, the old meta with the Aztecs was to go Fast Castle into, like, Eagles, Monks, Crossbows, and things of that nature. Um... But so far for Huang, he's just walled up a little bit. And you've just got to know, like, MBL on this side. He has to expect something crazy from him. But it's an interesting one because MBL doesn't know exactly what to expect when there's Aztecs involved. If it's Celts, Huang does the same thing, and he's done it 6,000 times. He makes a couple of militia. He makes a market. He sell sells a stone. He tries to get to Castle Age as fast as possible using the market. And then he tries to eat your TC. Um, the Huang phrase... Probably the most notable phrase with this player, as somebody asked him, and I was in the chat when it happened, which is why we started this discussion, you know, uh, after the fact is like, Huang was streaming, someone said, Huang, why Kelt? And Huang, who doesn't have the best of English, said, Kelt ETC. <laughs> and then uh, I remember talking about that the next day, and then like, all the chats, all the comments, all the whole community just picked up on the ETC thing. Huang even had an ETC... Um, he was in an ETC clan for a little bit, which is kind of funny. Anyways, Huang is, uh, not making a barracks, guys. So here's MBL's point of view. Again, like, we're going to focus primarily on MBL's point of view because we need to see what MBL expects. MBL has gone for a mill. Uh, fairly standard stuff. Has brought in a lot of food. Looks like he's going to be going up to the feudal age. And so that's, uh, this is important. MBL did not actually see the mill was going up. So he could still be thinking there could be militia coming in. Look at Wong! Look at this, man. He's so greedy, right? And like, it has to be said, and I'm sure you've heard plenty of people say it. This is not really a guy who's going to go too deep into torn and tourneys um, if he's playing the same rotation of like two to three civs and always playing Arabia. But what he does on Age of Empires most famous map, which is Arabia, right? Like, everybody likes to play Arabia at the high level. It's just so bold, man. Look at MBL. MBL's like, what's he doing here? This is the tiniest little base ever. Like, I'm fairly zoomed in by my standards of casting, and Huang's got everything here on this part of his screen. And guys, he's gonna go fast castle. That's his approach here. He's gonna send two to gold. He's going 22 pop up. I would go, like, late archers off 22 pop-up, but it looks to me right now that he's going to try Fast Castle. Now, a small side note on that, as MBL realizes this, this is great from MBL. MBL knows Huang enough to say, oh, I haven't seen a barracks. Maybe I can go Fast Castle myself. Um, but, yes, yeah, so on the maps that have uh, elephants or rhinos instead of boars, you get 400 food as opposed to 340. So that extra little bit of food can help. 
And Huang is even going to push in that final ostrich. There's the barracks for Huang. I could be wrong, by the way. I'm just getting a vibe this is going to be Fast Castle. I've not seen this game. But when you think Huang, you think Fast Castle, which is why I think MBL is doing this. And MBL is just going to go no walls. Keeping an eye on things with his scout. And now maybe MBL is a little confused, too. All right. So, no militia from Huang. Nothing from the barracks just yet. MBL still just camping it, wondering if there's going to be a flag on it. So you look to see if there's a flag or look to see if there's militia. And it's actually really bold, but really smart from MBL not to spend any resources or time walling. And there he is, still double checking. Now he's going to look, okay, he has a barracks. He doesn't have militia. Does he have any sneak villagers? Is he going to build something? What's the plan? And there's an archer range now for Huang. And a spearman. So, like, right now, doesn't really look like a fast castle build, right? Looks like he's going to apply a little bit of aggression. Norwegian on the other side, still playing open. Still might be paranoid that there could be a villager around. He believes, as I believed, that this could be a fast castle. I think MBL is just going to come home now and try and push in a little bit of extra food. And uh, Huang is adding one archer. So he's going to have an eagle, a spearman, and an archer. Now, Huang actually finds MBL's scout here. He gets fortunate. I think if MBL didn't have his scout there, Huang wouldn't be following. And so now Huang actually has an idea of where MBL is. And he says, hey, I'm just going to push this down. So now MBL's got to change his plan a little bit. Because now he's like, wait, what, what on earth is happening? Now MBL's going to make some militia, it looks like. And actually, I, if I had to guess, I'd say he's maybe making militia because he's not expecting there to be an archer. And there he actually passes an archer. You'll notice both players have a lot of food. MBL's going to drop a market in a blacksmith. It's always a fun little game you can play when you're talking about Huang. And that game is how many farms before he makes the market. I don't know if there's a different name we could give that. By the way, Malians do have extra pierce armor on their infantry. Uh, it's still only two pierce armor. Uh, against an archer, which does four damage, though. So it's not great, but it is it's a little bit of something. MBL's happily distracting here. Okay, so right now, Huang's got three farms. A lot of other players would have farmed with all that wood. And Huang says, yep, we're just going to play some market. All right. The game goes late. Huang's typically dead. Huang likes to apply pressure. Huang likes to be aggressive. Huang does not like the game to go late. And I feel like in many ways he kind of mind gamed MBL in this one, right? Like MBL thought it was going to be Fast Castle. And now MBL's changing his strat a little bit. So he's adding an archer range. And he's also going to go to stone. All right. Villager here for MBL. What is this? MBL wants to maybe drop a tower here, I'm guessing. But I believe he sold the stone. Um, and he sold the stone because he needed to get Castle Age. Huang also sold the 100 stone, and Huang is now adding the second barracks. Here comes a tiny little attack here from Huang. MBL, though, does have a skirm. He also continues to make militia, which is interesting. I'm not sure that's necessarily the wisest move, but he is expecting eagles, so I think he's thinking maybe longsword is a long-term option. Actually, a longsword would be a really good choice here against Huang. So the more I think about it, the more I take it back. Wong still needs this gold, obviously. He's going to add his blacksmith now, and he's producing eagles, which will start to produce a lot faster starting in Castle Age. And on top of that, <clears throat> the um, the eagles get seven base attack starting in Castle Age, too, before any of the other, you know, upgrades like Eagle Warrior. Yeah, MBL happy right now just to chill. Wong's point of view, he does see the barracks has a flag, so Wong must be thinking this guy might go for Long Swordsman. And Huang is about to have 13... Four farm. Actually, not even four farm. Four food. 14 on gold eco over here for him. MBL now sees the other mining camp. It's crucial here that MBL somehow walls this up. But that's really tricky because he has to micro here. And there's Huang's vills. You have to build the tower and then you also have to get walls down. So if Huang reacts right away, I think the tower will not end up staying up. But it is an annoyance. And so Huang, with his amazing eco, 
has to send a lot of his vills this way after it all. MBL goes for a villager kill. And MBL will lose the scout. And in the end, I think this tower will end up going down. But look at MBL's villager. <laughs> when you have full walls around and your villager can't leave, the villager will be stuck in the middle, which is actually beneficial to MBL. Meanwhile, uh, we have man-at-arms, soon to be long swordsman with some skirmishers. This one was going to make some monks. That villager is in the middle of the tower and is repairing like a madman. And honestly, I mean, it's it's definitely worked out for MBL. Like, I feel like the idle time's worth it. As MBL's trying to loop around with this now to hit Huang's golds, because he knows it's exposed. All right, villager goes down, obviously. That is our first villager kill of the game. And great game sense from Huang, who hasn't seen the army anymore. So he's thinking, well, you know what? I might need to protect myself here. Now, skirmishers could eventually whittle down the villagers, too, so it's not necessarily ideal if MBL has ranged units, but... MBL at home with longswords. MBL happy to stick with longswords. Two barracks making the longswords. Huang needs to react on this gold. The more you delay Huang, the better it is for you in these types of games. Uh, so, even if MBL doesn't get many more kills here... Keeping Huang at home is great because, as we've said many times with this player, it's like the longer the game goes, the worse he is because it's all about power spikes and early aggression. It doesn't really do too well with the other aspects of the game. MBL researches supplies! Don't see that every day in Castle Age. But it makes sense if he wants more long swords, and he'll use his skirms now to try and kill the monk. And I don't think that'll end up happening here for him. And MBL's got to be a little bit alarmed now, because that's a lot of monks out there for Huang. Guys, even though Huang is known as a Celt player, I think playing all-in monks with Aztec suits him, because he tends to have a lot of villagers on gold anyways. And Aztecs are fantastic with their monks. They get plus 5 HP on their monk after each monk upgrade. So Sanctity is coming in, which gives you plus 15 HP. But because that's a tech, you actually get plus 20 from that. Not to mention the other techs that you could have coming in. And these long swords are slow before Squires comes in. But here we go, MBL. Feels like a moment where he'll, he'll want to take out some of these monks. He'll lose a long sword or two, but if you can kill the monks, it should be great. It's just a great engagement for MBL. Full clear up. This distraction obviously helped him a lot there. And MBL dominating Huang right now. He's got three monasteries and is desperate for more monks. Even selling wood for more gold. That's the Huang economy for you. Also, this villager's going down. And now MBL is probably like, I've got this one. I'm dominating this dude. Well, what a waste of time this game is. <laughs> probably something MBL would say. Uh, two long swords switch sides. Huang says, I don't have enough monks. So let's send more vills to gold. Let's make another monastery. But again, I think it's crucial for MBL to always kill the monks every time he sees one. Also, speaking of crucial, I think it would make sense to get uh, Fervor right now if you're Huang, because it would make your monks faster, plus you'd get more HP, like I said. MBL, still one town center. It's not like he's booming here or anything, but he knows that like at least the approach I use when I play Huang is stay on one TC, because generally speaking, Huang's one TC eco is poor. You don't need to have the extra town centers against this player, especially if he's Celts. You don't want to give him more things to eat. There's the fervor upgrade, by the way. The monks are going to be faster. We've got more and more conversions coming in. The monks are going to be up to 55 HP. Longswords only have 60 HP, by the way. These are old men. These guys are going to be stronger soon than the longswords. And not only the conversions, but also the healing is very strong. But MBL continues to push in. Funnily enough, MBL now is getting eco upgrades, feudal age eco upgrades. Like he even delayed those this game. But yeah, the eco KD is three to one. Overall KD is thirty-five to twelve, and it's just it's just a curb stop right now. Like it's it's absolutely it's looking good for MBL. I don't want to say easy because nothing's easy against Huang. It's certainly not on your head at times when there's this many monks. You just hear the whoa, whoa, whoa all the time, but. Uh, yeah, MBL's doing a good enough job to now feel comfortable to drop the second TC. And now Huang sells 800 wood, if this is correct, and or 700 wood to afford redemption. So we've got 55 HP monks that are about to be 60 HP. 
The monks will be able to con convert buildings, and the monks will be able to convert siege. And MBL is going to go out for a counterattack. We had two villagers die before for Huang. Huang doesn't care. And also, it's not about being sneaky. So Huang just runs forward, drops the siege workshop, kind of right where MBL could see it if he's running out this way. And now MBL is over here on the gold. Like, this is the most important area for Huang. The so Huang needs to defend that. MBL doesn't see this, so he didn't have Town Watch. And so he reacts to the longswords attacking him. Remember, these used to be his longswords. So he's got four longswords to deal with, and he only has five. And there's the monks. And Huang says, I'm sick of you making longswords. So MBL gets into the wood line, which is obviously great for him. But at the same time, <laughs> he could lose his barracks if he doesn't engage soon. And as he goes in for engagements, Huang is locked in on converting more longswords. Huang's economy is so disgusting. <laughs> it's so bad. Everything's so messy about it. But look at MBL's base. MBL's now lost a barracks. MBL has uh, how many? Eight long swords, seven long swords. It's about to be eight, maybe more, hanging out in front of his base. And he is killing villagers. However, the vill count's still fairly even. And at the end of the day, Huang's got 12 monks out there that could always convert villagers back or convert army. MBL is forced to, to engage against this soon, right? Like, But he does not want to lose more longswordsmen. Here, MBL tries desperately to kill some monks. He'll be happy that Huang's off that gold, but Huang's still over on this gold. We have another monk trying for conversion on this barracks. And we've got monks trying to convert this barracks through the front door. That's kind of a funny graphic. Uh, this monk starts to get attacked, but the barracks is already converted. And these monks start to get attacked, but the barracks have now been converted. So, Wong has stolen three barracks. This is all before he brings in siege. Meanwhile, he's going to convert this longsword underneath the TC. He'll say thank you very much. And so this game continues somehow. And actually, MBL, he's really struggling. Like, yeah, he has the second town center. But how on earth is he supposed to stop this push? He, he's committed to long swordsman. If he goes for something else, that could always be converted as well. Huang is just... It's insane with how much commitment he has. The monks are now going to go for the mining camp. <laughs> I, I would love to see houses too. Just like convert everything. Look how many barracks he has! He has five barracks! Now he doesn't have economy to produce anything out of the barracks. But he has five <laughs> barracks at MBL's base. Man, if MBL wasn't Malians, which have a discount on wood buildings, it'd be hurting him even more. Not only the barracks, but he has 12 longswords. <laughs> he has 12 longswords, but he didn't use any of the barracks to produce them. Oh, this is insane. And now, of course, he shows up with the siege. And MBL, is just, like, he did so many good things in this game. Like, now he's hitting the gold. This is something that Huang struggles with because he plays really open. So, good counterattack there from MBL, but, like, it has come to a point where MBL absolutely needs to counter this. The death ball has to be stopped. Um, here come the longswords. And a good quick log from MBL, but now he's got things to worry about here. I'm sure he was looking here as well because Huang has more monks trying to get conversions there. And this is just an unkillable death ball. I, I don't know how we got here. Because Huang was in such a poor position early, but the guy just committed four, five, six monasteries, converts all the barracks, went for all the techs, you, uh, just laid on the market, and MBL's got nothing. He's got nothing. This TC will be eaten for him. So Aztec eat TC. Huang has just got Vils on gold randomly all over the place. You've got monks all over the place. Huang is honestly like a... Someone has called him a bot before. I feel like that's the best way to describe him. He looks very bot-like in how certain things play out with his games. Now MBL is like all over this gold. But Huang can see it because those are Huang's barracks. <laughs> and Huang says, oh, wait, another barracks. Oh, this is awesome. I'll take that too. And I don't know what you do. Do you delete it? 
I guess deleting it's actually bad because it's not like Huang can actually use it anyways. But at least it delays Huang a little bit. I don't know. I do not know what you do from MBL's position right now. The Vill count's dead even. Um, his farming eco has been abandoned and purely out of disgust, I'm sure he's playing on here. But he can't, anything he produces gets converted. There's 14 monks with four more on the way. And he has 10 longswords. And his only town center is about to go down. Here, MBL goes with some villagers. Here, MBL goes with some longswords, just hoping for the best. And Huang's got to be loving life. Where are these villagers going? What are their, what is their plan? What do they see? I don't know if MBL really knows what's going on there. Here you're going to have a nice shot there from Huang. And in the end, Huang's push should continue here. And MBL now runs away. MBL still not really showing me what the plan is, and he calls the GG. The biggest shocker for me is that Huang went up to eight farms in this game. Now, granted, he doesn't actually have farmers on them. Uh, they're sitting here idle. But... The guy's just insane. And there's a reason people get tilted by him. Uh, it's because the level of commitment he goes for just produces some ridiculous games. Now, Aztecs going all-in monks is not necessarily a new strategy, okay? So Huang is not necessarily innovating, but you know, he is showing that he could beat the best of the very best with a select few civilizations. And while it might be ranked games, might be Arabia, and things might change in the tourney, it's still pretty freaking cool. Um, now, <laughs> the thing that... The thing that probably frustrates MBL the most is that the start to Castle Age was really good for him. Uh, he started to take out the monks. I think, honestly, maybe long swords are simply too slow, and they're so they're just so much easier to get converted than something like knights like Cav. Like maybe in the end, MBL needed to switch into a stable. I definitely think there was a point where MBL thought, "I've got this game," but Huang, like no other, is just able to to somehow turn it around. How many conversions did we have in that one? It was a short game, as they often are with this player. Um, 47 conversions. 47 conversions. Wow. Uh, do you think high-level players see this as a waste of time? abso freaking lootly. I also do. Uh, Caster 90? Very different outlook on it than player 90. <laughs> I'll, I'll be real with you. Um, the, the, the main thing is they faced up against it a thousand times, you know? So that's where it starts to really grind on them. But, man, look at this economy. MBL went for that standard approach of, like, a mix of everything you could. Um, Huang just slapped everything onto gold, and he somehow made that game happen there. And I like the mind games in this game. Like, I think what made this special was MBL thought it was going to be Fast Castle, and then Huang came in with a little bit of feudal pressure. And so MBL made some militia, and, like, I think the game wasn't quite as clear-cut as MBL thought it was going to be. wasn't quite as predictable. And, uh, you know, maybe he got he got stuck thinking um, that Huang was was playing a bit differently and got, got beaten. He got beat bad. There's no other way to say it. GG.